Have you heard about Anchor? If you haven't, I'm here to tell you it's the easiest way to make a podcast. Let me explain. It's free, and I mean free. I haven't paid a dime to produce or distribute my podcasts. There's a creation tool that allows you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer. How easy is that? Podcast distribution can be a headache, but not with Anchor. Anchor distributes your podcast for you so it can be heard on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and many, many more. As a bonus and not an obligation, you can make money from your podcast with no minimum listenership. Anchor has everything you need to make a podcast in one place. Download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. Hi, I'm Marianne Paul, America's Lady of Supernatural Thrillers and a founding member of Author Masterminds. I wrote Madeline's Cat as a tribute to all the children, young and old, who have ever felt like misfits or have ever been ridiculed for their beliefs. This is for all of you. And it's also for anyone who enjoys a supernatural yarn. Madeline Thornburton was always considered odd. Children in her school said, she's a creep. Stay away from her or something bad will happen to you. The teachers agreed. Even they spent only the time necessary with her. Nothing more, nothing less. It's not her fault, her mother Emma would say. On this day, Principal Emmer called an all-too-familiar meeting about Madeline. Emma Thornburton walked into his office, held up her hand, and said, Madeline has been through a lot with her father's passing. She is a sensitive, kind child. Why can't you let her be? She's threatened Charlie Banks. She wouldn't. Well, she told her teacher Charlie choked a young dog. And what did the teacher do? The teacher asked Charlie. He said he hadn't. And Madeline was lying. And you believe Charlie. Mrs. Thornburton. She told a group of classmates she owned an invisible horse named Drew. Fairies lived in the woods behind her home. And her best friend is a ghost named Lacey. These are just three examples of her lying. So yes, the teacher believed Charlie. So why am I here? Madeline told Charlie he would be punished for hurting the puppy. Next thing you know, Charlie took a tumble off the slide and broke his arm. That's not Madeline's fault. Charlie said she made it happen. How? Charlie outweighs Madeline by at least 20 pounds. He could have fought her off. She told Charlie he broke his arm because he hurt one of God's innocent creatures. So her ghost friend Lacey pushed him. Now all the children are going to the teacher telling her Madeline says they will be punished too for not telling the truth about Charlie and the puppy. We can't have this kind of behavior. It's affecting her entire class. Emma Thornburton nodded. I understand. I'll take care of it. You best. Otherwise, Madeline will be suspended until you get her some mental help. Emma Thornburton sighed. Thank you, Principal Latimer. Shame, frustration, and despair overwhelmed Emma as she left his office. When she felt this kind of despair, which was often with Madeline's antics, she shopped. Emma looked at her watch. Thank goodness they are keeping Madeline in school today. I have an hour. Emma jumped into her silver Toyota Camry and took off, maybe a little too fast. Emma returned just as the bell rang. She smiled as she looked in the rearview mirror at her new prize, a small stone statue of a regal cat. It will be a perfect addition in our backyard. She watched Madeline coming toward the car and groaned. There she is, alone, talking to somebody who isn't there. What is wrong with my child? Madeline settled into the back seat. Emma said, I I met with Principal Latimer today. Madeline's rosy pink cheeks turned white. You know about Charlie? Yes, and I know you are scaring the entire class. He hurt that puppy, Mama. I saw him. No one else did. They think you made it up. I think you made it up, too. I didn't. Did you push Charlie off the slide? No. How did he fall, and why did he blame you? He was being punished for hurting the puppy, Madeline whispered. Really? Yes, 
God punishes those who hurt the innocent. Really, Madeline, you know that's not how the world works. Otherwise, the person who left your dad on the side of the road to die would have been found and punished. That didn't happen, did it? Maybe it didn't. But Daddy wasn't like a puppy. No, he was better. Yes, Mama, Madeline whispered. You must stop telling all these tales. You must. They aren't tales, Mama. They are the truth. That's enough. I don't want to hear another thing about fairies and ghost friends. Do you hear me? You won't mention any of these things at school. Do you understand? But people need to know, Mama. People need to stop hurting the little ones. That's what God wants. I told you there is no God. Your dad would still be here if there was. Madeline looked at her hands. You aren't allowed to go into the woods anymore. Why not? My friends won't understand if I don't visit them. You are making up all these so-called friends, Madeline. Stop it now. Do you want to end up in the loony bin like your Aunt Della? Do you? No, ma'am, Madeline murmured. No, ma'am, Madeline murmured. And you must stop telling your classmates they are going to be punished. But they need to know. If they are sorry, then they won't be. Madeline crossed her arms and burrowed into the seat back. She looked to her right. Oh, Mama, this statue is beautiful. It looks real. It's not. Madeline touched the cold stone. I think it could be real. She leaned forward and pulled on the back of the passenger seat. Can I name it? Do you promise to stay out of the woods? Yes. Then you can name it. Madeline looked deep into the lifeless eyes. She turned to her mother. The cat wants to be named Fantasia. As if you need to be reminded of any fantasy thinking, Emma answered. Please, it's what it wants. It's what you want, right? Madeline studied her pink and white sneakers. Madeline, you must be responsible. It is you who want to name this cat, right? I guess so. That's a start. You can name it Fantasia. Madeline smiled and petted the stone. I know you are pleased, Fantasia, she whispered in the stone cat's ear. Emma took the concrete statue to the garden and placed it on a bench overlooking the pond. The cat stared straight ahead, seeing something Madeline only wished she could. She sat next to the statue. Do you see a better life out there somewhere? The cat continued to gaze into the distance. Madeline threw her arms around the cat. I wish you were real. You look so wise. Maybe you could tell me how to make Mama understand. Maybe you'd help her believe there is a God. Madeline forgot about venturing into the woods. On the days when loneliness threatened to engulf her in everlasting darkness, she spent hours with the stone cat who stared at the horizon. Many days, Madeline tried to follow its gaze. All she saw were the trees, trees that surrounded the home and housed her friends. They are not imaginary, Madeline said to the cat. They miss me, and I miss them too. But I have you now, so it's not so bad. The cool of autumn gave way to winter's icy breath. In spite of the cold, Madeline visited Fantasia every day. Put on your coat, Emma would scream as Madeline scurried for the door after finishing her homework. Day after day, Emma Thornburton watched her odd child through the kitchen window. Worry and anger turned to despair. She's getting worse. Now she's obsessed with the cat. She'll never be normal. It's time for, to ask for help, Emma thought. Emma made Madeline's favorite dinner of fried chicken and mashed potatoes. She watched her small child eat. Tears filled her eyes. This may be the last time I get to spend a dinner with her, she thought. Emma straightened her back in determination. We're going for a ride tomorrow. Where? We're going to visit Aunt Della. Madeline's eyes grew wild. I don't want to go. You are going, and to be honest, it is time for you to stay a little while in the same place. I can't help you. Maybe someone else can turn you into a normal child. No, Madeline cried. Yes, her mother answered, and say goodbye to the cat. It won't be here when you come home. Madeline burst into tears and ran from the house. She threw her arms around the cat, put her head on its cold stone shoulder and sobbed. 
She can't take you away. What will I do without you? For a moment, just a moment, Madeline thought she felt warmth through the stone. She touched the shoulder again. It was cold. Madeline dangled her legs from the bench, swinging them back and forth in a scissor-like motion. She stopped moving. I know. We will go into the woods. My friends will know what to do. Then you'll be safe. Madeline waited for the house to go dark. She tiptoed to the kitchen. I'll need something to eat. At eight years of age, Madeline's cooking skills were limited. She pushed a spindle-backed pine chair from the table to the cabinet. She inched the cabinet door open and grabbed a jar of peanut butter. Madeline pulled the white bread from the bread box and made herself two sandwiches. She stuck them in her small backpack. There, she said. She put on her heaviest coat and winter boots over the thermals, jeans, and sweater she'd worn to bed. She grabbed her mother's fleece-lined leather gloves. Mama will take me away for sure when I get back, but Fantasia is worth it. Madeline held her breath. She pulled the latch on the door, opening it inch by inch to avoid the loud squeal. One squeak escaped. Madeline stood stock still and listened. No movement in the house. She ran for the tool shed. Madeline wrestled a wheelbarrow free from its spot by the door. She struggled to keep it upright and set its wheel on the path. She made her way to the stone bench. Madeline put her tiny arms around the cat and lifted. Oomph! Too heavy, she thought. She searched the darkness and spotted an old board leaning on the back fence. Madeline dragged it over and placed it between the bench and the wheelbarrow. She managed to scoot the cat onto the board. Gravity did the rest. There, Madeline said with satisfaction. Madeline guided the pushcart unsteadily toward the woods. I woods, she thought. She came to an old white oak. She smiled up at the tree. Oh, I've missed you. She threw her arms around it. You'll be safe here, Fantasia. The oak will make sure of it. I'll visit when I can. Madeline turned to leave. A tall bronze man stood in front of her. Hello, Madeline. Oh, hello. You scared me. The man smiled. You aren't one of those bad men who hurts animals and children, are you? No. White wings opened from his sides and spread wider than the oak tree. Oh, how beautiful. Thank you. I guess you must be an angel. Yes, I am. Why are you here now? I've never seen you before. Well, I'm your guardian angel. I'm here to take you home. I can get home by myself. It's that way. Madeline pointed down the path she'd traveled. Not that home. You're home in heaven. Now? Yes. You see, you were only supposed to be on this earth a short time. How come? Well, God made you special. He made you to see things others cannot. He gave you a protective spirit, even though you are so young. You have been brave ridiculed and punished for telling the truth, yet you gave a voice to many of God's small creatures. Madeline looked around her. Snow rabbits, chipmunks, squirrels, and even a red fox peeked out from behind the white oak. She smiled. God wants you to come to heaven now and help with his creatures there. Oh, okay. But what about Fantasia? Madeline looked into the wheelbarrow. It was empty. Fantasia! Madeline cried tears spilling down her cheeks. Madeline, the angel said. She looked up at his kind face. I am Fantasia. Her eyes widened. Really? Yes. All those days of your life where you were hurt by others, where you felt completely isolated and alone and thought the darkness would swallow you up, I was there. I knew you were real. You are loved, Madeline. Let's go home. The angel held out his hand. Madeline tentatively took it and nodded. The sky glowed a brilliant blue as they shot like stars into the canopy of darkness. A small child's boot tracks and the unmistakable footprints of a large cat remained. Emma Thornburton searched for Madeline. 
She found the footprints of the tree and nothing else. She searched the woods every day for over a year. Guilt overtook Emma. It crushed her. She could not stop reliving the last words she said to Madeline. She eventually checked herself into the asylum where she would have put her child. She died there. Some say of a broken heart, others say of a guilty one. It is said today that it is said that even today, when there is a heavy snow and the moon is high, a child's laughter is heard at the old oak tree. And if you listen closely, you will also hear the soothing purr of a cat, a purr that touches the heart and heals the mind. And on those cold, bitter days, a small set of boot prints and cat paws appear as if invisible beings are walking. They stop at the old oak tree, then disappear as if they never were, just like Madeline and her cat. Thanks for listening. You can find out more about me and my writings at authormasterminds.com forward slash M-A-R-Y dash A-N-N dash P-O-L-L or maryannpaul.com. May the wind always be at your back, the sun on your face, and the good Lord walk beside you. <music>